Can you perform micro soldering repairs without a steady hand? That's a question I get asked a lot and it's something I want to try and answer if I can in a video. So my name is Dakota, I'm a electronics technician. I perform micro soldering repairs and component level diagnostics on motherboards which are found in devices such as games consoles, laptops, MacBooks, that sort of stuff. If you want to learn about that sort of stuff, make sure to get subscribed because I do teach that stuff on YouTube. But one of the common comments which I get on YouTube is that they would love to do, or people would love to do what I do, but they don't have a steady hand. And the truth of the matter is, you don't need one. I don't have a steady hand, and in fact, day to day, generally, my hands are pretty shaky. I have some quite severe damage in my neck from a car accident about seven years ago, and I can't keep my hands steady. In fact, I get random involuntary movements and twitches while I'm under the microscope performing repairs. But I wanted to go over this and just show you a few techniques which you can use to actually keep your hands steady while you're under the microscope, performing repairs, moving components about, replacing components and things like that. I'm not a surgeon, and I'm assuming if you're watching this video, then neither are you, because otherwise you would have super steady surgeon hands. I'm trying to say that three times fast. But anyway, let's get on to the workbench. I'm going to pull a few donor boards out and I'll go over a few examples of what it's like without my techniques and the example of what it's like with my techniques for keeping a steady hand. So I've got this motherboard here. This is a PlayStation 5 motherboard and this is basically dead, which means I can use it for an example and show you a few techniques. So, like I said in the intro, I don't have a steady hand. I'm genuinely pretty shaky when it comes to day-to-day -day tasks. But I do have some techniques which I use to actually keep my hand steady enough to be able to perform complex repairs on motherboards. So, if we look at this motherboard here, we've got a load of components. Some of them you can see, some of them you really can't see very well. Some of them are incredibly small. And the problem with that is if you've got really shaky hands, you can find it difficult to be able to remove components or replace components, you know, especially if it's in a very densely populated area on something like a phone or a MacBook, for example. If we look here on the back, we've got a bunch of components here and we've got a bunch of components here. And I'm going to use these two areas as an example just to show you the differences. So I'll pop under the microscope and we'll take a look. So if we take a look here, this is on the PlayStation 5 motherboard on the area which is known as the safe bridge. So on the back of here, we have a safe bridge IC, that's just a basically a power management IC. And underneath it, there's a load of things like resistors, decoupling caps and things like that. And they are very, very small. It's pretty densely populated. So looking on the back here then you can see we've got a load of components varying sizes we've got some uh, 0805s we've got some 0603s we've got some 0201s so there are a bunch of different components here and especially around this area here it's quite densely populated right so it's going to be difficult if you don't have a steady hand to be able to move those components around if for example you had a shorty capacitor you needed to replace it or you've got a blown resistor or something like that so let me just show you an example without the technique that i use of what my hands are like day to day so it doesn't really matter what i do to this board so just to save some time i'm going to go as hot as i can on my hot air rework station i'm using the atten st 862d very good station highly recommend it not sponsored but it is a very good station. But I'm going to go to 480 degrees Celsius just to speed up this process of removing components and things like that. So I'm going to try and remove a component without using my techniques here. And already you can see that under the microscope, and this is not faked in any way, but under the microscope, I am not steady. Let's just heat this area up. Let's go for this third capacitor on this bank of four. I 
Okay, so I've got the cap, but you'll see that my hands were all over the place there. Like, absolutely all over the place. Let's try that again. So let's move that one out of the way. Get rid of that. Let's go for this middle capacitor here. Again, I managed to get it, but it was very, very close. So let's say I want to put that cap back. Let's say that I want to replace that capacitor because it's basically shorted. Right? So I've got the cap still in my tweezers. So let's just pretend I've just took one off a donor board. I'm going to add some flux there, just a little bit. I'll put my tweezers to one side with the cap stuck to it, uh, the tweezers. And I'm going to try and tin this area. Okay, so I managed to do that. That's absolutely fine. I mean, it's going to be a lot different if you've got no experience at all. Because with my technique, I naturally want to put my hands there, which is quite difficult to do if I'm trying to do a video demonstration of what it's like without the technique. But I do really feel like this will benefit you and level up your uh, micro soldering game. Let's pretend I've just taken a cap from a donor board now. Like I said, I've still got it on the tweezers. And I've just added my leaded solder to make it easier to solder down. I'm going to preheat my board again. And yeah, you can see that I started knocking components there. Let's take that one. Yeah, I lost it. <laughs> okay, that was a better example. Let's take uh, this one here. Whoops. Yeah, okay, now it's starting to go all tits up, forgive the expression. But essentially that's what it's like if you're not trying to control your hands and things like that so i'm going to let the board cool down for a minute i won't make you sit there and wait through that i'm going to show you a technique now on a different part of the board where it's nice and cool and this technique is going to really level up your game honestly i'm not kidding around here so if we go back to the overhead cam here and the hot air is still cooling down, so there is still going to be a bit of background noise. But one of the techniques which I use is to rest my elbows on the actual table. So never try and work with your hands floating in the air, which is a mistake I see quite often. What people do is they think that they really need to squint and get down close with the hands really close to the face so as I've got better hand to eye coordination and they're sitting there hovering with their arms over the desk or over the workbench and the problem with that is you've got absolutely no control your hands start to get tired your arms start to get tired gravity naturally wants to make your hands go down you're constantly fighting the forces trying to keep your hands up and you're sitting there and your hands are, even though they look really steady now, you know, my hands look really steady now. If you've got your, for example, hot air in one hand and you've got a pair of tweezers in another and you're hovering over the desk, you're constantly fighting the forces to keep your hands in one position. So you're fighting gravity, you're fighting your, your own body's natural reflexes and things like that. And it's a losing battle. You're never going to be able to do it or at least not without complete and utter concentration, but you need concentration to focus on what you're doing. But you're, spend, you're expelling all of your energy, focusing on keeping your hands steady and not paying enough attention to the task at hand, which is taking a component off, putting it back on. So one of the techniques that I use for keeping my hands steady and to reduce the amount of energy that I need to use to keep my hands steady is to rest my elbows on the desk. So that's going to automatically halve the amount of energy that it takes me to keep my hands steady. 
And then the other technique I use to keep my hands steady is while I'm actually performing the repairs, and this will take a little while to get used to because of heating the motherboard and stuff like that, but I use the side of my hands and I rest those either on the table, if I'm doing something on, for example, a VGA chip or something like that, or I'll rest it on the motherboard itself. Obviously, the motherboard is going to get warm as you're adding components, removing components, things like that, but you kind of get used to it after a little while. It's the same with when you're using solder braid or solder wick. You, when you first start to use it, as you're wicking away, you're holding the wick, it's going to burn your fingers. But your body starts to get used to it, and eventually, you know, as long as you're not sitting there for, you know, 10, 15, 20 minutes until this board is absolutely baking hot all over and all of the heaters kind of spread across the entire board, you're not going to burn yourself. And I mean, don't take my word for it, but you shouldn't burn yourself. If you're just replacing a few components, the board where your hand is, compared to where the heat is, it should be far enough away to the point where it's not going to actually burn you and do any kind of cause any kind of injury and things like that. So what I do is I take the side of my hand and I lean that on the board. So I've got my hot air in one hand, I'm leaning that with my, with my elbows firmly on the table, firmly on the table, but I'm also putting the side of my hand on the desk as well. And like I said, what that's going to do is it's going to halve, if not more, the amount of energy that you need to actually keep your hands steady. And let me show you that under the microscope now. So here we've got another densely populated area. We've got a lot more smaller components. This is the SSD controller. It's the power management and things for the SSD ICs. This is a much more densely populated area, which is why I save this for the afterwards example, because obviously you've got more room to work on the safe bridge than you have here. And I just think this makes a better example for actually keeping your hands steady. So remember, I've got my elbows firmly on the desk. I've got the palm of my hand or the side of my hand firmly on the desk. This board, this is fairly cold here, so that's absolutely fine. Uh, side of my hands firmly on the desk. Let's go for that component there. You can already see how much steadier my hands are. And they're not absolutely 100% steady, but they're steady enough. Let's put that back. And one other thing that I find is that when you're resting your hands, you do have much better hand-eye coordination. So you take that off. That was a bad example. I did crash into that while it was still a little bit warm. But it didn't cause catastrophic uh, problems. So, like I said, if you look now how closely or how steady my hands are, up close, compared to now when they're off the desk, I can't keep them steady, right? I can't keep them steady when they're off the desk. So if we bring the camera onto a side angle, you can actually see what I'm doing as I'm doing it. So if I bring this back into the middle here, and hopefully you actually get the idea here, let's find another area. Let's use, let's use the HDMI area, that'll do. And the reason I'm using the HDMI area is because I've actually got to put my hands here where it's still quite warm. So one of my hands is going to be around here. I will say be careful because, you know, you could burn yourself. But like I said, your body's going to get used to it eventually. So uh, one thing you can do to avoid heating, you know, burning your hand a little bit more is just use the tips of your finger and it's still going to help. You know, if you're, if you're just resting the tip of your finger and the edge of your wrist on the board, it's still going to help a lot more than if you're just you know, trying to do it freehand with your hands floating in the air. So let me just show you that quickly. I'll go for that resistor there and I'll remove it. I'll show you the microscope view, but while I'm doing it, I'm going to show you the side on view. So hands on the desk, or rather arms on the desk, sides of my hands on the board. There we go. 
and that's removed without knocking any components. Once again to put it back, rest my hands on the desk and the board, put the component back and there you go, the component's back. So there you go, that is the technique that I use to keep my hands steady while I'm microsolving. So the answer to the question, can you do this without steady hands? Absolutely. I don't have steady hands. Like I said, I have a neck injury and unfortunately that means I get random involuntary movements in my arms and things, more specifically my right arm or my right hand because I've got a neck injury on the right hand side. I've got three crushed discs in my neck. I cannot keep my hands still day to day and I do get occasional spasms in my hand as well and I still manage to do this every single day. All it takes is a little bit of practice when it comes to the technique. Like I said, rest your hands, rest your arms, rest your elbows. Never try and hover your hands like this because you're fighting the forces. So that's going to be for now. I really hope this helps. I hope it helps to level up your game and allow you to perform more complex repairs faster and easier without risking damaging the boards that you're working on. Give it a practice, give it a try, I promise you it will help. So that's going to be for now, thank you very much for watching. If you do have any comments or questions, leave them down in the comment section down below. If you do need any parts and supplies, such as the chips and stuff off this motherboard, check out the website consolefix.shop and you can also book in repairs there as well if you need me to do any repairs for you, whether that's on a personal level or business to business. Don't forget to subscribe, turn on the bell notifications, make sure you don't miss any future videos, I'm going to be doing a few more of these examples so be sure to get subscribed for that. So with that being said, thank you very much for watching and until next time, I'll see you later. Bye for now.